Welcome to the evaluation and management portion of this course. Evaluation and management services are used to report visits of medical providers. It is the first section in the CPT manual even though numerically it should be last. It was brought to the front because this is where most services begin with what we call evaluation and management of a patient. During the visit, the provider evaluates signs, symptoms, or overall health of a patient and manages any diseases or illnesses the patient has. These services are provided whether the patient is at the hospital, doctor's office, or other location. Visits are called evaluation and management services, abbreviated as E and M, and are not specific to one medical specialty. The first step is to determine the category or subcategory of service, so let's start here. E&M codes are divided into categories representing the type of service such as office visit, emergency department, nursing facility, etc. Some categories are divided further into subcategories to indicate specific details reflecting the status of the patient as either new or established or inpatient or outpatient. Subcategories are divided into levels which are assigned a five-digit code. This is an example of office visits. First, you need to determine is the office visit when you go see your physician, is it a new patient or an established patient? If it's a new patient, you have levels of care. We call these 99201 level 1, 99202 level 2, 99203 level 3, all the way to 99205 level 5. Same thing for established patients. You have 99211 for level 1 established and 99215 for level 5 established. We're going to go into how you determine the level a little bit later. First, let's talk about how you determine a new patient versus an established patient. A new patient has not received any face-to-face -face professional services from the physician or qualified healthcare professional or a physician or qualified healthcare professional of the exact same specialty within the same group. New patients have not been seen within the last three years. Established patients have been seen by a provider in a group in the last three years. There are three key components to every evaluation and management code, and that is a history, an exam, and medical decision making. This is how you determine the level of code. A history is the medical history of the patient. An exam is the physical exam of the patient, so if they check your heart rate or they check your reflexes. That's a physical exam. They're physically examining you. Medical decision making is the complexity of the decision making of the provider for your specific diagnosis. So the steps for coding are listed here. First, you must select the category or subcategory of the service, which is, was it a hospital visit, an office visit, what was it? Then you will review the level of the ENM service descriptors, and examples. You'll need to determine the level of history, the level of exam, the le level of medical decision making, and select the appropriate e &M service. For this test, they will mostly tell you the levels of each, but I'm gonna go in further detail for your, my students so that you have a greater understanding of how this would work in the real world. Now let's talk about leveling. For the exam, they will most likely give you the extent of the level and you will just have to determine it from there. We'll go into the details on how you figure out this on your own for the real world a little bit later on. You need to know that a history and exam is leveled by problem focused, expanded problem focused, detailed, or comprehensive. And medical decision making is straightforward, low, moderate, or high. Throughout the ENM section you will see verbiage like this. Requires two of the three key components. And again, the key components are history, exam, and medical decision making. When it says it requires two of the three, you go to the middle code if there aren't two codes that are the same. If it says it requires three of the three components, you always go to the lowest. And I know that's a little bit tricky to understand right now, so I'm going to try to break it down for you in the CP. We're going to take office visits as an example. Let's look at new patients first. 99201, which is our level one new patient, says it's an office visit or an outpatient visit for an evaluation and management of a new patient, which requires these three components. 
a problem-focused history, a problem-focused exam, and a straightforward medical decision-making. 99202 says an expanded problem-focused history, an expanded problem-focused exam, and a straightforward medical decision-making. 99203 says a detailed exam, a detailed history, and a low complexity medical decision making. 99204 says a comprehensive exam, a comprehensive history, moderate medical decision making. 99205 is a comprehensive history, a comprehensive exam, but a high complexity medical decision making. So because these codes say they require all three of the components, you must meet all three of those to get that code. So let's do an example. Let's say that the patient had a detailed history, a comprehensive exam, and moderate medical decision making. The best way I can explain for you to easily do this is in your CPT book with a pencil, you can make little marks next to which one they apply to. So I said they had a detailed history, a comprehensive exam, and moderate medical decision making. You might be tempted to code 99204, but you cannot code 99204 because you don't have a comprehensive history. You have to default to the code below it because you exceeded a detailed exam, you got a comprehensive exam, and you exceeded low complexity medical decision making, you went above that to moderate complexity. So you meet a 99203. Let's look at an example for an established patient. An established patient says you must meet two of the three. So for a 99212, let's say the scenario gave us a problem-focused history, but they gave us an expanded problem-focused exam and a low complexity medical decision making. We can go with 99213 because it says it requires two of the three and we did meet two of these three. So we get a 99213. Now let's say that on one scenario that you had a problem focused history again and you had a detailed exam and a high complexity medical decision making. You have one in each in three different categories. So in this scenario, you would not go with 99215 because you don't have two of the three. You only have one. However, you would go with 99214 because you exceeded moderate complexity medical decision making and got high. So you technically do meet this level because you have two of the three, a detailed exam and a high complexity medical decision making. So your code would be 99214. Rules for different sections. So you wanna make sure you read and highlight. Let's go to the category initial inpatient hospital observation. At the time that the physician decides to put a patient in observation status, this would be a, the group of codes you would choose from. The second paragraph gives us a couple of situations to consider. The guidelines tell us when the patient is admitted to the hospital after being in the observation care status on the same date. Look at the notes for the initial hospital care. The guidelines also tell us if the patient is admitted and discharged on the same date to look at codes 99234 to 99236. The guidelines throughout the ENM chapter assist us in determining whether we have selected the correct group of codes. Continuing in the guidelines, we are told when observation status is initiated in the course of an, another service, all those services are included in the observation status. If the patient was being evaluated in the emergency department and the physician desi decides to move the patient into observation status, the physician would not charge for his e emergency department services. He would use only this initial observation care code. The last note under the initial observation care section cautions us that these codes cannot be used for post-op recovery. 
If the patient has a procedure in an outpatient setting and was supposed to be released to go home, but instead kept for observation, the observation care would be considered part of the post-op care and included in the surgical package. Now let's look at hospital inpatient services. This set of codes is used not only for the inpatient facility, but also if you're reporting for a partial hospitalization program. This category is further divided into subcategories for initial hospital care and subsequent hospital care, just like our office visits were new patient and established patient. A note under initial hospital care explains this is for the first hospital inpatient encounter by the admitting physician. If there are other initial inpatient encounters by physicians that are not the admitting physician, look at the initial inpatient consultation codes or subsequent hospital care as appropriate. Sometimes an admitting physician is present in the morning, and when the rounds change, another physician assumes care for the patient. In this example, the admitting physician in the morning would report the admit code, and the second physician in the afternoon would report his services as a consult or a subsequent hospital care, depending on the services provided. You can't report two initial hospital care visits in the same day from the same episode. This is a CPT guideline. However, for Medicare, it is possible to have more than one physician report the initial hospital care. The guidelines also instruct us to report 99234 through 99236 for services where a patient is admitted and discharged as inpatient or observation on the same date of service. Subsequent hospital care codes are used for the subsequent visits during the inpatient stay. All level of subsequent hospital care include reviewing the medical record, test results, and assessing changes in the patient's status since the last assessment. Observation or inpatient care codes identify services when the patient is admitted and discharged on the same date. For example, a patient comes into the ER at 2 a.m. with an acute stomach ache and the physician places the patient in observation status to see what's going on. The physician orders some labs and the patient gets some rest. By 8 a.m., when the physician takes his rounds, the patient is feeling much better. The situation has resolved, the lab work has come back negative, and the physician decides to release the patient. Because the patient is admitted and discharged on the same date of service, one code would be used for this section. Hospital discharge day management codes are billed by the amount of time the physician spends completing care for the patient. The final exam paperwork writing of the prescriptions and sitting down with the patient's family members or caregiver to give relevant instructions on how to care for the patient are all included in the discharge day management. A parenthetical instruction at the end of this set of codes reminds us to refer to codes 99234 through 99236 for admit and discharge on the same date of service. The parenthetical notes also provide instruction on how to bill for concurrent care by another physician on the discharge date. The concurrent care would be reported with subsequent hospital care codes. The final parenthetical note in this section instructs us to look at 99463 for discharge services provided to newborns admitted and discharged on the same date of service. The next category in e &M is consultation services. Consultation codes are divided by location. When coding consultation services in an office or an outpatient setting, you will use 99241 to 99245. If you're coding for inpatient consultations, you would select 99251 through 99255. Your CPT coding manual defines a consultation as a type of evaluation and management service provided at the request of another physician or appropriate source to either recommend care for a specific condition or problem or to determine whether to accept responsibility for ongoing management of the patient's entire care or for the entire specific condition or problem. Other appropriate sources may be a physician's assistant or nurse practitioner. To qualify for consultation, the documentation has to meet what we call the three R's. There must be a request by another physician. The consulting provider needs to render his own or his or her own opinion. And three, the consulting provider needs to respond with a written report 
to the requesting provider. Another type of consult you may see is one mandated or requested by an insurance company. For example, in workers' compensation cases, there are times when a physician says the patient is not ready to go back to work. The insurance company may request a second opinion. In that situation, report a consult code and append a modifier 32 to indicate service occurred at the request of an insurance company. If, subsequent to the completion of the consult, the consulting physician assumes responsibility for the patient, the subsequent care would be billed on the correct place of service, office visit or hospital, nursing home facility, etc., depending on where the patient is seen. Consultation codes do not distinguish between new or established. For inpatient consultation codes, only one consultation code should be reported by a consultant per admission. If the consultant visit, if the consultant visit, now turn to the emergency department section. Emergency department codes do not distinguish between new or established patients. For services to qualify as emergency department services, they must be provided in a facility that is hospital-based and available 24 hours a day. The Instacare and Urgent Care facilities open after regular office hours are not considered emergency department services and you wouldn't be use the subsection codes emergency department. Emergency department services will always be provided in a hospital-based facility. Just below the emergency department visits is a code for physician direction of EMS emergency care advanced life support. There are situations where a physician will direct the emergency care from the emergency department. For instance, the patient will be in an ambulance or at a scene, and the physician will direct the ambulance or rescue personnel how to provide care to the patient. Critical care services are provided to patients in the hospital who crit are critically ill or injured. Services must be the criteria of a critical illness or injury defined in the CPT critical care guidelines. The critical care guidelines define a critical illness or injury as one that ac acutely impairs one or more vital organ systems such as there is a high probability or life-threatening deterioration, deterioration in the patient's condition. Critical care is usually provided in a critical care area but not always. Services provided to a patient who is in critical care unit but not considered critically ill would be reported using another ENM code. The same physician can be critical can bill critical care and other ENM services on the same date. CPT also includes instructions for reporting pediatric critical care and neonatal critical care. This will be further discussed when we reach the neonatal and pediatric critical care sections. There are a lot of guidelines in the critical care services part of your CPT book. You should review those and make notes in that section. CPT includes a list of services that are considered inclusive to critical care. These services should not be reported separately when provided during the critical care period by the same physician providing the critical care. You will need to refer back to it when coding for critical care to avoid unbundling services or missing opportunities to bill additional services. It may be beneficial to highlight each of the CPT codes listed in the paragraph, so when you're on the exam, you can easily refer back to your guidelines and find the CPT code you're looking for. The attendance of transport of critically ill or critically injured patients over 24 months of age should be reported with the critical care codes. If the patient is under 24 months of age, they are reported with different codes. Critical care is billed in time increments. If the total time of critical care is less than 30 minutes, bill the appropriate ENM code instead of the critical care code. Code 99291 is used to build the first 30 to 74 minutes. After the first 74 minutes, build the add-on code 99292 for each additional 30 minutes. When calculating the time for critical care codes, include the total time by the physician on the date of service, even if it's not continuous. The time spent on the floor unit reviewing patient records and tests, as well as the time spent on the floor or unit with family members to obtain additional information on the patient. 
is included in the time you report for critical care. That's an important note you should write in your book. Time spent off of the floor may not be included. Neither may time for separately billable services be included in the time. CPT guidelines provide a convenient table to help you convert the amount of critical care time to CPT codes. You should see a table like this in your CPT book. 30 to 74 minutes is 99291. That's 30 to 1 hour and 14 minutes. It breaks it down for you like this, so you should definitely use this table. The next category of E&M is Nursing Facility Services. The guidelines pertain to care that is given in a nursing facility as well as services provided to a patient in a psychiatric residential treatment center. You should write that next to this guideline and in your index. Nursing facility services are divided into initial care and subsequent care. This section does not distinguish between new and established patients. Services performed at other sites of services performed with the admission were considered inclusive and are included in the nursing facility admission. Exceptions to this are hospital discharge and observation discharge services billed on the same date. These services may be reported separately. Parenthetical instructions in your CPT manual tell us to see 99315 and 99316 for nursing facility discharge services. When a patient is discharged from a nursing facility, all services provided on that date are included in the time used to report the discharge from the nursing facility. As with discharge from hospital admission, this includes instructions for care, preparation of discharge papers, prescriptions, and referral forms, in addition to any care given to the patient on that date. The last subcategory under nursing facility is other nursing facility services. This section includes one code for the annual assessment that is required by law for patients in a skilled nursing facility. Every year, these patients must have a detailed annual assessment, which would be coded with 99318. The next category in evaluation and management codes are for services provided to patients in The domiciliary, rest homes, boarding homes, custodial care services, or assisted living. You may want to make an entry in the alphabetic index or in your table of contents at the beginning of the section. Write in assisted living, custodial care services, rest homes, and boarding homes. Care plan oversight services are used when the physician provides the oversight of the patient's care plan for services provided to patients in 
domiciliary rest homes, boarding homes, custodial care services, or assisted living. These types of facilities differ from nursing facility in that there is no medical component to the care. A physician will review the case management plan for the patient and any test results. Although there is no daily nursing care for the patients in these types of facilities, the physician will check with the workers to see if they noticed anything out of the order. To see if they noticed anything out of order, such as increased disorientation or skipping meals, the patients are typically on medication under the care of their physician, and the physician will review what is planned for the patient. The physician may write new orders or will make a new care plan for the patient. This service is billed in increments of time. Relevant codes are divided into whether the patient is a new or an established patient. Our next category is home services. When a physician sees the patient in his or her home, look at the subsection of codes. Home visit or private resident codes are divided into subcategories for new and established patients. The next category of codes is prolonged services. Prolonged services are separated by with direct patient contact and without direct patient contact. They are further subdivided between office outpatient services, or services provided in an inpatient setting. Most of the codes in this section are add-on codes. The only exception is the Physician Standby Services Code, which may be reported independently from other codes. The codes for prolonged services with direct patient contact are used to report the total duration of face-to-face -face time spent by a physician or other qualified healthcare professional on a given date providing prolonged services even if the time is not continuous and must meet 30 minutes before the codes can be assigned. The services are reported in addition to other services including E&M services at any level. Additional appropriate codes should be selected for supplies provided or procedures performed in the care of the patient during this period. Codes 99358 through 99359 are used to report prolonged physician services without direct patient contact, but does require the billing provider, but does require the billing provider to see the patient at some point. The last code in this category is for standby services. Standby services are used to report time when a provider is on standby at the request of another provider. This service is only reported for more than 30 minutes in duration, with additional units reported for each additional 30 minutes of standby time. Do not report standby services if the period of standby ends with the performance of a procedure subject to surgical package or the global period. The surgical package includes the operation itself, local anesthesia, and typical follow-up care. You should review these guidelines in the surgical guidelines section. For example, if a cardiothoracic surgeon standing by during a echocardiography performs emergency open heart surgery, the standby service would not be reported because the open heart surgery was reported and it's included in the surgical package. The next category is case management services. CPT defines case management services as a process in which a physician or another qualified healthcare professional is responsible for direct care of a patient and additionally for counseling management and managing access to, initiating, and or supervising other healthcare services needed by the patient. The case management section reports medical term team conferences either with direct contact with the patient or family or without direct contact with the patient or family. The medical team conference requires a minimum of three qualified healthcare professionals from different specialties or disciplines. For guidelines, a physician bills a regular E&M service for a conference with a patient or family and uses the conference codes for those held without the patient or family. The next category is care plan oversight. Care plan oversight services are monthly for the time a physician spends overseeing the patient care. The, patient lo the patient's location, 
either home health agency, hospice, and nursing facility, and time drive the codes select. The patient's location and time drive the code selection. The patient's location could be home health agency, hospice, and nursing facility. The codes are billed by time. The next category is preventative medicine, medicine services. It is used when the patient is not ill, but is coming in for an annual physical exam. The codes are divided between new and established patients and are selected based on the patient's age. If the patient presents for preventative medicine services and an abnormality is encountered or a pre-existing problem is addressed, and the abnormality or problem is significant enough to require additional work to perform the key components of a problem E&M code, the appropriate code from the office visit section should be reported in addition to the preventative medicine services. A 25 modifier must be appended to the office or outpatient services code. 